and welcome to another very exciting episode of the Fully Charged Show. I do get to talk to some really incredible people. Uh, uh, today's conversation is with Daniel Barrell from Re Automotive, an amazing startup uh, from Israel. What they're doing, you can see on the screen behind me, is really impressive. Uh, before we do that, though, I just want to remind viewers of the opportunities available to people who have subscribed to the Fully Charged Show on YouTube because uh, you would then be you're eligible to enter our competition to win a car, an electric car, for a year and not just in the British Isles, all over the world. It's an amazing offer. Please do check it out. Links about it are beneath this video. There's other smaller competitions coming. If you go to our webpage at fullycharged.show, you will be able to find out all about it. It's very exciting, but that's enough of that because I really want you to listen to what uh, Daniel Barrell is talking about because it is amazing technology that could really change the picture of the uh, transportation industry in a very major way. So, that's enough waffle from me. Let's get on with the show. The thing that I've come to realise recently is particularly I've reviewed a lot of cars in the last six months that have come out. You know, they've been delayed and delayed and they've now come out. Made by legacy manufacturers, big car companies that make petrol and diesel cars. And you, you understand, once you go round their factory... Why do they put the, the uh, battery control system, the engine control system, the motor, the cooling system, all in one lump and then, then slide it up into the car as it goes along the production line? Oh, because that's exactly how they do a combustion engine. You know, we've been building cars the same way for the past, what, more than a century? Yeah. Because conceptually, if you think about it, an EV today is basically a petrol car where you've taken the petrol exactly, engine exactly. and put an electric motor. Yeah. The, the rest is more or less the same. Yeah. Now, being flat, it's an advantage, but, but it's not really flat. If you think about it, all the today's so-called skateboard chassis are, are flat only in the middle. Yeah. The front and the rear are not flat. Why? Yeah. Because for the past century, we've been packing in between the front and rear yeah. axles all the drive components, yeah. right? Everything that makes the car go. So it can't be flat. Yeah. So only the middle part is flat. And if you're honest about it, it has been flat also more or less with yes. with, with petrol. <laughs> There's been a, 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 a drive shaft there, but not nothing else. Yeah. What we're doing is we've taken everything that makes the car go. The, the motor, the suspension, the drivetrain, the steering, the braking, and the control. And placed it in a space between the chassis and the wheel. Now, that specific space in between the chassis and the wheel hub, we call a corner. Right. And it's all packed there. Once you've taken it off the chassis, you can change the dimension of the chassis as you want without causing the ripple effect, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you, you take a regular chassis, any EV today, and you change the wheelbase by six, seven inches, there is a ripple effect. You have to redesign the half shaft. You really have to redesign the center of gravity, suspension, etc. Et you, you build a new vehicle yeah. that cost about a billion dollars yeah. in about eight years. Yeah. Right? For, yes. That's basically the most expensive six inches in the world. <laughs> and, yes. and, and, and it's only because there's a ripple effect. Yeah. But when you've taken it off the chassis, there is no ripple effect. It's agnostic to the chassis. You can put it on different kind of chassis. Yeah. We've built four different families of corners with different attributes and capabilities. Now we have, of course, different permutation of each of those families, but according to your requirement from the vehicle, we choose together with you the right, the right family of corners, and then you're sorted out. That's all you need. It's everything in those corners, right. regardless to the size, shape, or, or use of your vehicle. Because I think the, the exciting thing is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but theoretically, if someone was using your system and decided to build a vehicle on top of it, they, though that a company wouldn't necessarily have to be a car company now or have that sort of long-term legacy of drivetrains, of, of stability, of traction control, all those, that's a huge, it's a huge topic. But they could build really good bodywork really useful uh, carrying capacity in a commercial vehicle or, or passenger vehicle or whatever and concentrate and focus their energy on that. I mean, I, 
it is a leading question, but I'm assuming that's the goal in a way that it, it makes exactly that side of it very goal. exciting for, for, for different uh, people. Uh, our, our whole motor is we complete, we don't compete. Yes. And this is exactly what we do. We're enabling. It's, uh, it, it's very similar to um, Intel powering a Dell, a Lenovo, uh, an HP, whatever yeah. brand you want, right? We do the same thing. You can build whatever you want on top. We're not yeah. competing with you. We're not going to build bodies ourselves. Yeah. We're going to enable you with a platform with everything you need. You don't need to do the, uh, uh, the build of that, the safety of that, uh, the uh, uh, kinematics, calculate. That's all on us. The, the ramp up, you know, we can make, look, we've made five and they all work and they're really good. Uh, yeah, but we want 500,000, <laughs> you know, that, so that ramp up. So where, how do you see that happening and where will manufacturing take place? Do you, have you got round to that yet? What we've done, which is different than anybody else, is that we created a very unique and exclusive network of tier one partners right. that are working exclusively with us globally right. in more than three, 30 countries, wow. 300 production lines across the world. Wow. And we're taking their free capacity right. from everywhere across the world. And then we move that according to what we need to make to the point of sale. So let's say if we need to make uh, vehicles in the, in the US or in the UK, we'll have what we call an integration center, which is a, essentially an assembly line, right. no heavy machinery or anything like that, just an assembly line. At a close to the customer, at the point of sale, and all the parts coming from all around the world to that location where they are assembled. Right. That allows us to build in the next five years about 15, one, five integration centers. Right. So we are going to be everywhere being able to meet that demand. Each integration center has the capacity of roughly between 2,000, uh, sorry, uh, 20,000 to 30,000 platforms a year. Right. Right. And we can build as many as we want of those. They cost just a few millions of dollars, not billions yeah. like any yeah. other production line. And that allows us to look at the whole market and address it at once without the need to invest monstrous yeah. amounts of, 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 of capital right. into that. I mean, it is the sort of standard model, which we're even seeing, you know, with people like Tesla, you know, they're going to build a gigafactory and another gigafactory. Now they're going to move that gigafactory to this even bigger gigafactory. And it's just all about gig. And those are colossal. I mean, the cost, I can't even imagine. And I mean, they're a profitable business. It's not that they're not going to, it's not going to work, but it is a monstrous investment. And what you're doing is fitting in effectively with existing uh, uh, logistics and, and structure and, and uh, production facilities. So you say you've had your, your whatever, the vehicle, it's been running for five years and there's this new battery technology, which is what you were mentioning earlier, has come in and there's now you can buy a, a, a competing vehicle with this amazing new super lightweight, high capacity batteries. That are, and then you can, so you can, without taking the vehicle to pieces, you can drop out the batteries that it was built with. Is this the case? And, and then reformat the new batteries and fit them in. I mean, is that, that's the, the idea behind that. And then That's you, whole you don't have to tear the car to bits to do that. Right. It's fully modular. It's built in order to apply that. Yeah. Exactly. By the way, also the corners, right? In five, six years, you might want different kind of corners yeah. with different capabilities. It takes less than an hour to replace a corner. Wow. How long does it take a vehicle to replace, I would say, um, um, the drivetrain? The drivetrain in actual gearbox. Huge. Uh, and huge it, cost. It, it, yeah. You have to take half the car out. Right take the gearbox out, put a new one in, re put everything. Right. And like my old mechanic, uh, when my old car used to do, every time uh, I put it into the shop, uh, there was a little plastic bag with some screws. And I <laughs> yes. used to say, what are those? So, like, I don't know where these go. 
Well, I've done he, that. He went all, all, every time, but yeah, you know. I've done that myself. Replacing a gearbox in an old van I had when I was a young man, and it was all done. It worked. I started. It moved. It was fine. And then I looked in a tray. There was five big bolts. <laughs> they never went back in, and I drove that car for years. I had no idea what they were for. I never found a home for them. Yeah. For instance, say you da- had a damage from a p- hitting a pothole, because of that has of the corners got things like shock absorbers and the suspension. Correct. It's got to be that's built in. So if that was damaged on one corner, it's just something I've experienced where I've damaged shock. You could effectively replace that corner, or even a, a, yep. a low speed accident or something that could be replaced. This is in the, its entirety. Yes. So again, think about fleet manager. Think about yeah. UPS, FedEx. All right. Let's say you've got a problem in a, in a shock absorber. Right. So you, you take it into the shop and a, a mechanic that is certified on that specific vehicle need to, to check it out. Yeah. Right. And then they say, OK, you need a new shock absorber. But most likely there is none available currently. Yeah. You have to order it. it takes a couple of days. That supply chain and spare part inventory management is, is really expensive and complicated. Yeah. So we decided to eliminate that. There is only one spare part. That's all. It's right. called a corner. Right. Whatever happened there, take one out, yeah. put one in, less than an hour, drive up. Right. We'll take care of everything later on. So say you've upgraded the batteries and upgrade and, and replaced a corner. What happens to that? those items once they've been replaced. And I think this is a really important point in going forward for all of us is what do we do with really? the bits of stuff second we've used? Life. Yeah, the second life, yeah. Mechanical parts are very easy to reuse, yeah. right? So, so, so that's a given, everybody yeah. does it today. We'll keep on doing that and, yeah. and probably refurbish and put back to use as, as much as possible. Batteries, on the other hand, have to be put into second life. So let's say you want a lorry going at a certain speed, right, with a certain requirement of that battery. But in a different market in the world, they don't need that high capacity. They don't need that much power density. They don't need that performance because the the, the uses is different. Yeah. So why don't take the batteries that you've been using for the past five years and put them in a different vehicle that requires lower spec yeah not 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 because it's a bad vehicle don't get me wrong yeah. just, just the requirements right yeah. but it could also be cheaper now, I, i'm assuming as well if it's this used, is yeah, what i'm yeah. getting to now usually those vehicles are cheaper yeah right because this is the trade-off yeah i think what mahindra now in india are are selling an ev for what four thousand about four thousand dollars yes yeah well, it's a brilliant car yeah for the indian market but nobody thinks it's comparing to Tesla or, or yeah. Neo, right? We, we, but, but this is the whole idea. Yeah. And we believe Second Life is key for those. Yeah. And this is why we want to allow you to change those while the Steve have some, still have some juice yeah. Yeah. in it. Yeah, we've seen others that are looking into putting them into the grid, that's battery, yeah. and putting them into houses, etc. By the way, it could be done, not, not by us. We're not a, no. a power company, right? Um, but, but again, it could be done. I think that the, the, the future of Second Life is still yet to be, to, yes. to be decided. It's on. only just starting, isn't it, really? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly for people in uh, the British Isles, I think there might be some interest in the fact that you're establishing a, an engineering centre of excellence at Mira. So I've actually filmed at Mira in the past. So I know what that is, a technology park here. Mira and, and their... Their testing track. I mean, it's what more than eight hundred acres. Yeah, it's of incredible. testing tracks. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. We 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 can drive in there. We can test our vehicles. We can do everything we wanted. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, this is very uh, selfish of me. When am I first going to be able to go in a vehicle that is powered by re? <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you know? Have you got any idea when the sort of first thing that we can see that is actually a vehicle, as opposed to just the skateboard, when we might see that? When can you travel to Israel? <laughs> I knew you'd say that. <laughs> I'm hoping soon. I have no idea. But I see. So that it's not impossible. We could see something quite soon. We would more than welcome you here. Right. And, you know, show you um, and, and let you play with the toys. Oh, that would be great. That would be fantastic. Well, 
Daniel, I want to thank you because I just think uh, what you're doing is really, really impressive. Uh, so thank you very much for explaining it to us today. And, you know, we will definitely be seeing more. There's no question now. There's, every now and then I'll see a new company and I'll go, oh, like Lucid in America. I really wanted them to work and they almost did, then it disappeared. Then They, almost did. they might do it, but you kind of, you're not sure. Whereas when, as soon as I saw Reese, as soon as I saw what you were doing, I went, thank you. these guys are going somewhere. This is fantastic. Thank you, Robert. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. always fun talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that. We're praying that we can either get to Israel to see what they're doing or, in fact, uh, go to uh, to the uh, their research and development uh, area centre here in the in the glorious old United Kingdom. Uh, really, really interesting what we are doing. And I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of them on the Fully Charged Show in the coming years because I think what they're doing is incredible. Um, that's all. I don't even want to talk about subscribing or Patreon. You, I could mention Patreon, uh, but the, and the links to that are also in the show notes for this episode. But that's all. I don't want to make a big fuss of it. I mentioned it up at the top. Please subscribe. There we go. Done it. Uh, that's all. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching.